I love yeah. watching. Do you do uh, Planet Earth with David Attenborough? Love yeah, it. yeah. I know you got that up your sleeve. Well, I could do him for sure. Oh uh, uh, yeah. Here we are looking at the bobble head. I cannot tell if he agrees or disagrees with me. <laughs> um, but I. Uh, You're listening to Studio Twenty Two. Welcome to Studio 22. I'm your host, Will Meldman, alongside the beautiful, the bold, and the beautiful Brock O'Hearn. The BBB right there. <laughs> How are you? Well, I guess four Bs, huh? I'm good. Yeah, yeah. Another, another great day in sunny California. Love that. We are here with actor, comedian, impressionist, Jonathan Kite. What's up, baby? How are you, man? I am fantastic. I'm excited to, to chat with you. This is going to be fun. Yeah, dude, I wish I had my own bobblehead. Yeah. <laughs> just gotta just move your head around a little I do, bit. Yeah. Be your own, be your I own look, bobblehead. Dude, I, I always said I am my own bobblehead because, like, no matter when I drink, no matter how thin I get in the body, I have like lollipop syndrome, where my face <laughs> just keeps going, and wow. like I have no like like with Leo, right? Leo, um, great guy. I mean, uh, never you know, but he his body is turning into you know sort of a right, right, like a, a, a penguin right. reverse the dad body. And, uh, but he has such a thin face. And so I was like, people, I, yeah. bro, I have the exact opposite. So I, that's what I look like. It's one of my favorite gifts I've ever gotten by this guy right here. Oh, that's awesome. That, he he yeah. knows I'm a big fan of The Office, too. So it's kind of like a... Uh, it, yeah, I mean, that's pretty good merch. Because I'm, I'm trying to right? road. Dude, I'm going on the road. Dude, he's got the same hat on basically right now. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm so. saying like you're living, you're living in bottom. Could you imagine yeah. just you standing in front of like a, a table at Comic-Con? We yeah. should do that at the table next year. Uh, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> We're, the, we're big Comic Con guys. We, I saw you had a comic book rack out there. Yeah, it's just out of pure love for storytelling, visual art, all that. Um, you mentioned The Walking Dead too. Like I have a zombie comic that's basically me and my dog taking on zombies all over. Oh, that's awesome! <laughs> yeah, I, love, I love comic books. I always wanted to be Plastic Man. Oh yeah. If they did, um, it's weird because like they were going to do a movie with Leslie Jones, mm. you know, Plastic Man, and um, <laughs> and, and then. Um, it got scrapped or whatever. It was a mini series, but I always thought like that would be a good one for me to do. Because yeah, is Pla Plastic Man? He's like uh, Reed Richards, right? He's, he's like yes. elastic. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And um, and it, he, but he, what I always thought of, he looked like a caricature of Superman or Shazam, because mm. they sort of make him more of an elongated face. He tells jokes the whole time. He's sort of like, um, yeah, like an exaggeration of those guys. Yeah. They don't have the same powers, but he sort of is just like a goofball. Yeah. Right. And so I, I'm That's like, it's a great character, yeah. Dude, they're okay. making every, they're making Madam Web, and I can't get a Plastic Man movie made. Who's kidding? <laughs> is that my camera? I can't get a Plastic Man movie made. Bro, I haven't seen Madam Web yet, but it, it looks like it's getting ripped apart online. Dude, it's it's. Did I you mean, see it? I didn't see, see it. it. Yeah, I haven't seen it. Be, uh, but I I have I have nary uh, a good word from anyone who has. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm a big Sydney Sweeney fan. You know, yeah, man. I mean, <laughs> they caught a guy masturbating in a movie theater. That's dark, dude. Uh, that's yeah, that, dark. the dark web. Um, <laughs> the uh, she was web. He was web slinging. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. come on. The, uh, the how how weird is that? But you know what? Here's the thing: when you make the Dune bucket from popcorn just look like a flashlight. Yeah, that was weird. A sandworm flashlight. That was a weird. That was a weird choice. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, come on, you, you're inviting that stuff in there. Yeah. I've seen some weird stuff in theaters, man. I used to go all the time. I had that AMC pass, you know. And Dude, I, I still have it. Yeah. We go all the time. My buddies and oh, I really? go all the time. Dude, I love going gonna, to movies. We got to catch some together. Yeah. One of my favorite things going to movies. But the last couple times I've been in there, yeah. I've seen people walk in with trash bags filled with, I don't even know what's in there, but they're pulling out the nastiest smelling quadruple cheeseburgers I've ever seen. They're taking naps four rows next to you and snoring. Like, I just keep seeing one weird thing after another. I'm like, dude, it's just going to be a matter of time before I'm in the wrong theater at the wrong time. I saw guys get in a fist fight when I went to go see Peter Jackson's King Kong. And um, I don't know if the movie just riled them up, but, like, <laughs> there was this older guy, like an older gentleman, you know? Yeah. And, he, and he sort of, I don't remember, but this, this young guy started fist fighting him in a movie theater. What the heck? Dude, and this was, you know, I mean, this was a, yeah. a long time ago, so yeah. it wasn't like, well, you know, Trump, COVID, whatever, like people blame <laughs> violence on. It, this was just like too, it was crazy, and then people yeah. had to like pull them apart in the theater. It's like, did you ever see the old movie Bachelor Party with Tom Hanks when he goes into the theater and he's mirroring <laughs> like the, the fight with the bad guy yeah, and, yeah. and he actually punches this girl in the face who's where, and she's like, wow, yeah. this is the most 3D movie I've ever seen. You know? <laughs> it's a great gag. That's but hilarious. that's like, we were watching that. Yeah, it's crazy. It was crazy. And the movie was over, by the way. Are it wasn't joking? like in the movie. 
it was like the credits were rolling, the yeah. lights were on, somebody bumped into somebody, and then it just became like round one. You know, Flight. It's, it's funny when I, it actually reminds me of, uh, how old was I? I was like 17, maybe 16. I used to go to double headers all day, every day, and, and I was pretty broke. So I, a lot of times I'd sneak in, which yeah. I don't recommend doing to anybody, you know, it's illegal. But I did, and I remember I snuck into this movie and this fight broke out like three rows in front of us, this chick and, uh, I don't know if it was a chicken and a chick or a chicken and a guy, but it was, it was nasty fight they went mm. they went at it basically stopped the whole movie you know and then at the end of it i remember coming down there like if you guys could just sign that you were a witness here and all for all the people watching and i'm like sitting here like dude i'm about to get busted that i snuck in here like what's going on like i don't know what's going on i don't on. have my ticket yeah but the, exactly and then so I, I was like yeah i'll sign it you know no problem i tried to sneak out but they cut me off before i could get out they gave me free tickets for signing as a witness and I was like this is the best day ever unbelievable I thought they, they were taking you down like how Al yeah. Capone got taxes <laughs> you imagine that was you that's how Brock got taken down double yeah. sneaks we tried to do the three the three Pete one time yeah that that's was a tough like, one that, that was tough it's a long time and especially if you have a little bit of time in between the two uh, films it's, oh. it's, 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 it's a long time or people who did like the Barbie the, the Barbenheimer. Barbenheimer I was just like dude go see your family like, yeah, th I mean that's like a, Call a friend, genius you know? marketing ploy, though. Incredible, yeah. but I, you know, the the commentary that was online about, I mean, I, I'd be, I'd feel pretty weird if that was Japan. Uh, what was, do like, you mean, sort like of making it like cutesy, like the? I mean, obviously putting those together, they're Warner Brothers. Oh, because it, yeah, 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 right, yeah, right, yeah. Right. That it's like you know more kid oriented and they're sort of just like, well, this will be fun. See, see this movie about this horrific thing that we did. Yeah, and yeah. see Barbie, and I love the film. I it's I thought it was one of the best films I've seen in a very long time. But yeah, I just I, felt like making that campaign cutesy was sort of like deflecting from the seriousness and of sort of the atrocity yeah, of yeah. the film yeah, 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 and yeah. the point of it. The terrible yeah. things we did, like you said, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like if it was like 9-11 and then like a, <laughs> a Pixar movie. <laughs> yeah. You know, one of them was about planes and the other one was about 9-11. Yeah, um, sorry, I'm slow sometimes. It takes me a bit to dude, catch up. Good. I love the I love the tats, dude. I don't have any. Oh, thank you. My tattoo is that I don't have any tattoos. I'm with I, you on that one. Yeah, Banksy, Henri Matisse, Bible verses. My family, just got it all. Yeah, dude. What is uh? Wait, what's the one up there? Wet Willie. Uh, this one. Flame Boy and Wet Willie. Oh, World Industries. Oh yeah, yeah. Of course, dude. Our our friend uh, Hannah Stocking did that one actually. Oh, nice. Yeah. I used to skate when I was in high school. Yeah. yeah. No, hundred percent. Yeah. Too. Alien Workshop. Yep. <laughs> dude, all that stuff. I, I actually. Osiris, you have those Osiris shoes. Dude, I'm wearing them now. Oh yeah. No, there you go. On. Yeah. Yeah. Soaps. Remember soaps? No. They were the shoes with the wheels on that you could, or no, the grinding pad on the bottom. So you could like grind. They were banned at our school because everyone would like. Leave marks on the door. Oh, oh, really? Dude. Yeah. Everyone, yeah. I can imagine. I just feel like you're instantly going to break an ankle or smack your skull open with those things, dude. Oh, yeah. They did. It's a little, yeah. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> horrible idea. They, yeah. It's, that's the thing. I mean, well, but I feel like things, people didn't care. Like we obviously skate videos. The nineties coming up, oh, dude. Nobody cared. Yeah. So was what like, did I? I just saw this video of this kid. He had to be like twelve. Freaking genius. But he was talking about um, how we went into. He thinks we went into. Uh, uh, you know the Mandela effect. Mm -hmm. He started breaking it down. And he said he thinks we went into an alternate universe just slightly over a little bit mm. because everything has been changed just slightly, like most things or whatever. So he thinks we're in this alternate universe. And I'm like, if you think about it, 2019 and before was pretty damn good. Now it's a little weird. It, it's been getting yeah, a little weird. A little weirder. And yeah. it's like a continental drift where it like yeah. feels like it's, it's just shallow. But if you look at like, you know, before the dark times and after the dark times, yeah. like it's a little weird about I, even like I, I think yeah. about the structure of life and all this stuff that just sort of came out of it and how there was like when it's little, you, you can't really feel the vibrations, but then it starts to spiral and get, you know, yeah. sort of expands. It's. Yeah, it's a little a little tough. It all started <laughs> in 2016 when Ghostbusters, the new female reboot, they partnered with the Hillary Clinton campaign. I think that was when it all... You think so? <laughs> Let me tell you something. Well, maybe it might cut that, but... No, no, no keep that in, I'll tell you why. I, I have a joke that I've been working on for a long time about, about which it, Madam Web, it's a little too on the nose, but it's like totally true. I said, I have a joke about, about female empowerment and I, you know, like... Uh, I'm all for feminism and, and equality. For I sure. just don't think we're going to get that way by remaking male-dominated movies with, you know, female turning characters. women into men. Yeah. Well, I think the the problem with uh, with uh, Ghostbusters are it was literally about three repressed scientists and their janitor bunny who use laser penises to get a jizz ball into a tiny box. I was like, yeah, that's the one. Like, you know what I mean? Out yeah. of all the movies they could have made, 
uh, just to kick it off. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah I was like, why would we? But I mean, listen, it, you know. Some of my favorite heroes in action films too are, you know, Ridley and Alien. Uh, Laura oh. Croft is a badass. Like one of my comic characters is modeled after Laura Croft and Black Widow, and you know, um, I so I definitely think there's ways to do that where everyone loves it for sure. Ridley, I mean, the aliens, I love that entire series have you seen the new one of the predator called prey that was on hulu yeah oh, yeah, yeah. yeah we watched that together actually that was yeah. awesome yeah. yeah i thought it was so good that the, the girl they Some had crazy the action lead, so good yeah. very believable i mean i'll go see those movies no matter what because i love that universe yeah oh yeah but it's like but some of them you're sort of like this is uh you know it's like did the predator just get a job at chick-fil-a like why are we doing this one and uh <laughs> But that one felt like exactly in the vein of the original stuff where they just went from time zone, you know. Yeah. And he was de-evolved with his weapons too. Yep. It was cool. Using nature again. Yeah, it was very yeah. cool. Very, very, very cool. I liked it a lot more than the than Shane Black's. Uh, the Predators? One. Yeah, yeah. I thought that, you know what though about that one was kind of crazy? Um, that you got to see another planet and in a way... To, to like I loved when they were walking and then the uh, the moon or the sun didn't move because that's how long mm. the days were yeah oh wait maybe it's um which one was his maybe his was the predator uh, is that the same one I maybe I just predators can't remember was it. Adrian Brody when they start and they're free falling out of the sky yeah, yeah different one different one oh okay yeah my that, bad my bad no because the predators one was wild yeah because think about it we always you know, we, we're top of the food chain, certainly Brock is, and um, and we're we're top of the food chain adjacent. We're top of the food chain plus one and two. But, um, you know, like, do you think about that other aliens and whatnot? I mean, yeah, we're immediately, we're like in the mail room in yeah. those corporations. <laughs> that it's like you couldn't, I mean, it's like that is unbelievable how we've been able to, that's what's crazy about how like the nonsense, obviously I think for different people, there's been terrible things, not just 2019. Yeah, yeah. But you got to think about, how we haven't imploded as a people because it's like we're, we're limitless. We don't really have any. We are our only competition, right? In the wild, that it's like, and we, you know, we thin our herds. But it's weird that like, not you know, we're, we're, thank God we haven't met aliens that would just come over and knock us off. Yeah, a hundred percent. Probably try to take them out too. Dude, yeah. We, well, and this is a, a, a this is my message to the aliens. I'm on your side. If you come down, let me know what you need. <laughs> Come in peace. We come, yeah. Well, they won't though. <laughs> right. What if they do? I mean, I hope they they do. But I think of every time you think of a dominant species coming. I mean, su certainly in human history. Yeah. With other humans and with animals, that if we could dominate something, we do. There's, I mean, there's no reason we could have lived in harmony. By the way, yeah. with a lot of these of different cultures. Oh yeah. We could have. We could be living in harmony right now That's across a, the globe. Exactly. Yeah. But we choose not to because of ego, greed, all this stuff, you know, fear, whatever it is. Everything that is human. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And, yeah. uh, and you know, so you, you got it. That's why we've got to keep the yeah, if you think about friends it, close the and the crystals closer. <laughs> yeah, you know right. what I'm saying? And I've been saying exactly. that for years. <laughs> that's um, fucking awesome. We're going to put that on t-shirt. Uh, <laughs> but no, that's, I mean, that's even in nature too. Like if, if there's a more dominant weed or, or plant or whatever, it just takes over, right? It's An invasive kinda, species. Yeah. We are the ultimate. Survival of the fittest. Yeah, evasive species. I love yeah. watching, do you do uh, Planet Earth with David Attenborough? Love yeah, it. yeah. Dude, the, so the original ones, I feel like. I know you got that up your sleeve. Well, I could do him for sure. Oh, oh yeah. Here we are, looking at the bobble head. I cannot tell if he agrees or disagrees with me. <laughs> um, but uh, the thing about uh, Dave, those That's original, so they would never show the violence, you know, mm. in the originals. Like, yeah. they, they would only show, like, ah, and he got away. <laughs> right. But right. now, I think people with the internet, they got to jack it up, yeah. dude. They're now like. It's aggressive. Yo, that's, that's the highlight. That's bro, the whole point. That giraffe. Yeah. Fucking ninja kicking those lions in the face. Yeah. I mean, they are. Yeah. What's you, the one you I had uh, Snoop Dogg narrating the lizard escaping the snakes. It was like a hundred snakes and like the just baby running, lizards yeah. are just like taken off and all of them. Was getting he on his back feet? Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I love those. Dude. So sick. What were you, sorry. What were you going to say? I was going to say that actually. That's oh, I, I really enjoy that one. Yeah. yeah. Um, have you guys seen the lizard video with Snoop Dogg? I too was what is that? that? No, no, I'm no, like, no. Wait. Oh, yeah, yeah, that one, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I I had Brock on my podcast a while back, and we we didn't get into this, but um, you know, I love pod, like when my team was like, "Would you be a guest?" I wrote back like, "Absolutely, instantly, of course." Dude, appreciate it. I love being a guest. I mean, especially with friends, but I love guesting on people's podcasts. And I did a podcast last year for like six eight months, 
And, you know, it's it's interesting because we were talking about just how hard it is to get a podcast off the ground. Yeah. And even if you're known, like there's plenty of people who are, you know, way more famous yeah. than, 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 the, than the average podcaster that are still, you know, struggles and troubles and whatnot because you're literally competing with everything in the history of time. Right, like if simultaneously, if you, yeah, 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 there's nothing that you can't get. You know, whether you have to pay for it a little bit or you, it's as for free on streaming or whatnot. There's yeah. everything is archived right now, and not only that, it's in obviously you know it's at your fingertips, right? And so the thing is, with the podcast for me, I love to come and, and and guest and like stay for a day, but I think like for me, it was just taking up so much of my time because I'm on the so road time. doing yeah. stand up, yeah. and I would get and I usually have to do it on Monday so that it would release on Thursday. And if I was on the road, and it was just me. I mean, I had guys guest with me. You know, like Ryan was on the episode with you. Yeah. But it's like it all was on me. So if I had a long weekend or if I was gone for two weeks, like straight yeah. doing stand-up, I'd have to like figure a way. Because it's like you, you want, want to be entertaining. You want to be funny. You, yeah. want to, you want to be lively. But if it's like if you don't have energy, it's like dude, I've, I've had that. I can't even tell you how many times I've been on this part. I'm like... There's not enough caffeine in the world. For sure. But yeah. you at least have each other. Yeah. For sure. Which is great. Yeah. And and the thing is, you know, especially if I'm on the road, to come back on Monday, usually Monday's the day that I have to get everything done yeah. that I didn't do for like Wednesday through Sunday. Yeah, yeah. And so it was always like I did I drove an hour to the podcast studio. We did it for an hour and then an hour home. And it was just like a three hours in the middle of the day. Oh yeah. That and I and I enjoyed it. I tried it. I had a great time with it. I I got out of it what I wanted to get out of it but I just was and it, it coincided with I actually um burst a uh, a hemorrhage of my or hemorrhage my vocal cord oh no where there was no rhyme or reason Through I went to podcast. a doctor no or it just, just happened in life wow. and I went to a specialist he was like yeah you just bruised it oh. so I was on vocal rest for like a week or two oh wow and I was just like this is not um and I had just come off doing shows like yeah. six shows back to back for fourth of July weekend or something that's crazy man yeah our, one of our buddies uh Jeff Jeff Beecher just got a, who's that? He was on the podcast. Um, Madhouse? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah he course. just got vocal surgery. He was on like vocal rest for like three, four weeks or something like that. Oh yeah. It's no joke. I can't imagine like, even if I love my alone time, not talking, like not talking to someone, how difficult is it to not talk? You could just get the Stephen Hawking app. <laughs> Welcome back to the There's podcast. A, there, isn't there a comedian? He's like, uh, uh, he uses that. There like, is a guy. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Out of Austin. But I, yeah, I, I do it sometimes on stage but I was just like that would be like the best why not like you wouldn't dude if you had to be on vocal rest you could just and but yeah. he has to type it in you so know it takes and, a minute yeah. it takes a minute but I mean he's pretty darn good at it and he has saved phrases you know yeah. and I was like dude that would be could you imagine that though even like two years ago you could have done that <laughs> yeah that you just had to be quiet or, yeah kind of kind of on the point where you're saying that you're competing against everything right like that's why we're never going to have another Michael Jackson, another Elvis, another, you know, whatever. No one's ever going to be that famous. People are going to, can, it's not going to be the same, you know? There are high levels of like, look at Taylor Swift. Well, massive, I was going right? to say, wait, I would wait and see only to see how long she can sustain this tour. Because mm -hmm. if she can do this tour, like she's doing, she did all the, you know, Amer uh, North America this year, doing uh, Europe next year, right? Yeah. If she can do that every couple years and still fill those stadiums, she will be this generation's Michael Jackson. Because that's actually, yeah, it's actually pretty. She accurate. has a catalog. That's the only what I was going to say. Because yeah. what to your point, most other people that were big, they didn't have a catalog mm -hmm. and they fell off so significantly. Yeah, if you're not constantly making new stuff for them to uh, uh, listen to or take in, you know, or buy or whatever, then yeah. And she's already made the transition where you know somebody young. Um, cause if you listen to like black or white and then like who's loving you, like two different Michael Jackson songs, right? One when he's young, one when he's older, you have to make the transition to what people will buy, I think in pop music mm -hmm. and what's cool now. Yeah. And then he stay relevant. Yes. Yeah. But then at a certain point you are relevant. Like nobody is, nobody is saying, uh, man, I wish, um, you know, I wish uh, the Rolling Stones uh, sounded more like Lil Xan. Like, they're just not saying that. So it's like whatever you do, you become the thing mm. that's enough. Yeah. But it, it takes a minute. Because I think about Justin Timberlake, you know, like he was doing it and then I, he took a break for a long time. And I, I think he's releasing an album. I'm curious to hear what it sounds like. Yeah. Because yeah. I, don't, I don't know what, what, for me, I don't know what he sounds like. Yeah. Well, I think the biggest gap that I've seen is with Justin Bieber. Like when he, he obviously like, I think even the music was a little bit young for me at the time. And then when he dropped an album, I, don't, I can't remember how long it was now, but it was like, wait a second, this is actually, 
this guy's this guy's killing oh, yeah, it right like now. Peaches and goat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. Or hip hop and it. Crushed it, dude. And I'm like, voice sounds. He bridged that point. gap. You know, yes, he he, he, he applaud, uh, appealed now to a, a older audience, right? Absolutely, and then everyone loves him. Kind of like what David Guetta did back in like the late like 2008, 2011, that time where he kind of took EDM and combined it with R and B and Usher and Black Eyed Peas, and then you just have two worlds colliding and just exponentially everybody's fans. Yeah, yeah. and also as a producer, it's like what DJ Khaled does. Like yep. you can you can sort of. You, in a weird way, like obviously DJ Khaled is responsible for those hits, but the pressure is off him, like in terms of, like he has to decide the sound, but there's something about having somebody relevant, like being somebody relevant that, that you want to be on those songs, that's such a hard thing. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like I was saying, I don't know if we talked about this last time, but the weirdest thing about when you're on a show that um that's relevant a lot of people work, you know, like, mm -hmm. and, and, but to be on a show, that's why everybody I think wants to be on Saturday Night Live right. because it makes you, I mean, it's a great show. I mean, it's, yeah. it's been on for 50 years. You, all the detractors are, it sucks. It's nothing. It's like, dude, well, we're still talking about it. So it's gotta be something. Yeah, it's still right. relevant. Yeah. And so the, and relevancy yeah. is the hardest thing in the world. You can be famous. A lot of famous people out there doesn't make them relevant. Yeah. And that is the thing about music. It's almost like the most, when you look at like the, the, the what were the award the Grammys the other day? I didn't recognize half the people up there. Right, and yeah, those are the yeah. people that are relevant right now. It doesn't mean that they're going to be relevant next year. It doesn't even mean like they're famous of the moment, and that's I think really tough. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, that's yeah, man. It's it's a it's a hard road. Like being in entertainment, any facet, right? Because you can have that one thing that hits, and if you're not doing anything outside of that, or it doesn't, nothing else hits for you after that. Or nobody's calling, wants to put you in. It's like, well. There's that child actor that was dope 30 years ago. Dude, um, no one is. I mean, you have a team, but I feel like the people that I know that fell off, they were like, okay, I'll, the phone will ring. And you have to. I, no, my you, opinion is even when you're on the shit, the phone doesn't. Like, you have, you can't expect the phone yeah. to ring. I do. When you, if you want to look at it from, from almost an analytical perspective, you start to break down the people that have made it on the highest level. They're the ones that are going and making it happen. It's yeah. and it very rarely, but every now and again, someone comes through and then they hit and then they ride that wave and they keep getting the call, 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 right? But doesn't mean they're not working their ass off. The people that work their asses off are the ones that guarantee their spot because it's hard to get there, harder to stay there. And I'm thinking, I'm sitting here like, okay, look, you might have an opportunity, but what are you going to do with that? Totally. What do you do with it? Because it's, dude, this industry, all, all, most industries, all industries are difficult, you know, but this one specifically, especially now that there's so much out there like how are you going to stay how are you going to stay relevant how are you going to stay in it you know totally what are you doing that's different and i also think with people want to buy you but they also want to buy you playing a character yeah so it's a tough thing right so it's like at least with lawyers because i always think like lawyers are the same thing as actors like they just don't need anymore yeah yet somehow theater schools and law degrees are being given out every year to people who earn them yeah but it's like I can't imagine, especially now with AI, how they're doing so much of the of the lawyering, you know? Oh yeah, you could just write a contract up, right? And it's like That's or crazy. all the research that you kind of go everything about, yeah. like, you know. So but but the thing with us is ours is our identity. Yeah, I mean, how many times have you heard uh somebody who comments on a very famous, very talented actor, but they don't like him, so they don't watch any of their stuff because of their political views or because of their, you know, they did one thing at one time that just nobody, they just didn't like or whatever. I don't know what, to me, I'm sitting here like, damn, you have to do everything right all the time. Dude, all the time. You're constantly yeah. being scrutinized. You're in your own version of the Truman Show. <laughs> yeah. Even if you're not, it's, it's, it's insane. Yeah. And then you, you know, it's, it's interesting because with my comedy, I, I try to go through, I mean, I, I, I tell jokes that are probably left and right because I'm not a political person, but it's weird how like people need to know things about you before they're willing to laugh about you now. They're like, like in certain in certain areas, and you got to think wow. like, and it's a weird thing because people people we're at war. Like that's the thing I think about since two thousand nineteen two thousand twenty. We're at war, like not we, but just the general. We, there's something out there that people are vehemently against. Mm. Even if like the nicest people, like your your aunt on Facebook or whatever, just there, as a whole, right? there's something that she hates. In a way that I'm not sure that like I was aware. By the way, maybe people always, maybe hate was always alive and well. But I yeah. don't remember seeing people, and I think because we have so many outlets for it. Yeah. So then we're we're so tribal now. Yeah. So then it's like, are you with us? Because if you're not with us, you're against us. Yeah, I mean, I honestly think 
the the algorithms of every social media company is hate gets more clicks. Hate is monetizable more than happiness or love or anything like totally. that. So I, I think that is definitely part of it. I think you're right. It's it's like some inner I think emotional stuff too. But like it's just it's undeniable, right? It's like there's been a societal, the way they make money. Yeah. Um, but yeah. I would say I would say like it, it, to me it appears like there's just been a, a massive societal shift where people feel, you know, before it was survival of the fittest, right? So you get the the alpha male that'll come out and in, in, say in the Lion Kingdom, right? The the strongest, baddest, toughest one wins, right? Now it's not that. It's it's who has the best lawyer? Who has the the you know who's gonna sabotage you? Who's gonna you know like how untouchable does this pe- person feel? How much money do they have that they can screw you over? How can I, can I cancel you because I have more power in the media? You know well, like it's, yeah, it's shifted right. It's also people like every system, unfortunately, like and I don't mean I don't mean um, um, illegally, but you always have to game a system because like I think of social media, and it's like what you have to say like uh, you know your, your caption is something like comedian destroys heckler like that was right, such right. a you know cliche <laughs> yeah. and then people were like would click on it and then you would watch it and it would be the most tame bs yeah. in the world <laughs> yeah, yeah. but then people were like but it got you to click on it yeah. because it's the hate right whereas like you know i think about the clips of mine that do well they're probably impressions clips or i've had a few but one of them from the podcast was i was i i was making fun of a film that people really liked and um I was, you know, I mean, I tend to talk pretty fast anyway. I've never done cocaine in my life, but um, people will say like, is this guy in coke all the time? And um, I was ripping on this movie and my buddy and I were um, uh, uh, just sort of not like, we weren't like tearing it apart, but we were just sort of like showing the humor of how ridiculous the film was. And the comment section lit up. It's like gotta be one of my top three videos of all time. It's on my Instagram. And it's just like, and the hate that they had towards us about it but then you had like you had it has twenty thousand likes or whatever it is yeah. or however many like, and you're just like yeah, but people agree with us that this is an insane film. But yeah. they just because they think it's an insane film, they don't feel the need to comment because I'm already doing the comment, you know, for them. Right. But then the people who are like, no, we love this film and we're not being represented in this conversation because it's yeah. like it's like oh, you like bananas, great, yeah, but you didn't say you liked oranges. You're like yeah, bitch, because we're not talking about bananas. Yeah, like we're not talking about, oranges, yeah. about oranges. I mean, yeah, like but that's the thing is like people feel like. But it, it's a part of that, is, I think, is that tribal response, right? So yeah. they, and then people jump on the bandwagon. I feel like the majority of it are people are just angry and they just want to vent about something that they can be angry about. Or a lot of people are just out there poking the poking the bear just totally. to see what happens, you know what I mean? Yeah, and or people troll and, you know. So that, that's the thing. In a weird way, like, all comments are good comments because, like, it's not even that I read the comments on anything, yeah. to be totally honest with you. I was just looking one time and I was like, whoa, this really blew up. And then, you know, people could say whatever they want about me or the show or my buddy or whatever and it's like it doesn't really i mean to be honest with you like i don't really care and so the thing is i think though you need to game that system though mm. or to be like you know here's the thing about palestine like start off like i was saying my that and then people were like you hate palestine i was like even though i just said here's the thing but you need to trigger people yeah so you have to game yeah. their trigger response yeah. And that's what that's what pushing the algorithm, which is such think, a destructive I, thing. I, yeah. I was watching this video earlier on Instagram, just like scrolling through. It was a massive cargo ship crashing in the waves, and then it goes to the guy. He's like, "Buy my marketing thing." I'm like, <laughs> "Great, you know, like capture Dude. and then, yeah." <laughs> he got you. Yeah, Dude, marketing he, worked. Yeah, that, but it, what you said, I think, nails it. Is it's a game? It it feels like a big game now, yeah. you know, and you got to play the game sometimes just to get ahead. Uh, it makes it very difficult to be a lot of times I feel just a genuine, authentic person when you're trying, at least in, in an industry where, and it just in a world in general, because like I think before we used to try to impress people who were in front of us, you know, like we'd want to like make that person like us or, or you know, it, it was about who's around you. Now it's like, let's try to get 20 million people online to like me that I'm never going to see. Well, that's what's so funny is that um, I think that the good people will still, the, the, the cream will still rise to the top, you know, because... Mm-hmm. The idea that when you do like a stand-up clip in uh, in my uh, in my world, they um, they edit out all the air, you know, so it's just like a mm. quick so th- so this comic will look masterful, <laughs> and then you'll go to see them, and it's just like uh, so uh, yeah, and it's just like <laughs> it's just going through everything, yeah. and you go, they have no pace, they have no, they got a great editor, that and that's what it is, and so I think mm. like you know we were talking off mic about how going into auditions and stuff. I think at the you know if they're gonna put real money behind you, they'll care about the authenticity. 
Whereas if they're just trying to, you know, if, if it's sort of like a middle game, you can edit yeah. your way out of that. Well, how many times have you seen it now where it's they put faces or actors or actresses in, in front of or in the position of a multi hundred million dollar film or billion dollar franchise and then they go off the deep end and you're like, wow, everyone doesn't like this person because they open their mouth and they are not nice. You well, know? they just look the part. I mean, yeah. I think it's also the things that you're going out for because I think of like Jonathan Majors, right? Right. So you think of, I don't know what happened. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't but it's, there. It's no longer the Kang Dynasty. But it's though. not, but it, as of, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's not going to be Kang Dynasty. And you think about, and here, here's the issue with a guy like that. If what he said, you know, I'm like, as if my lawyer's in the other room, like you can't say that. <laughs> but I don't know what happened is the thing. And I, maybe I read about it and then I, my body, my mind didn't retain it, you know? Right. But it's like, if people do something illegal, yes, they need to be punished. But I think that there's something, aside from illegality, America, and international fans, there is, um, you're, gonna, you're not gonna like everyone you meet. And the idea that, so I think it's best for me to keep my personal life essentially like out of my acting life. Yeah. Like I don't want because the thing is we want to like Captain America, but we don't want to know that Chris Evans um you know sometimes doesn't wipe all the way. Right. You know, like there there's imperfections about these people but not so if you're going to play like an iconic character it's, you know, unless it's like Robert Downey Jr. where we love that he overcame his alcoholism and his drug addiction. Yeah. I.E. Tony Stark. It's a great story. Yeah. It's a great Everybody loves a comeback story. That's why Mickey Rourke. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, you know, with with The Wrestler. Love yeah. The Wrestler. Great so. But that's a very niche thing. Whereas, yeah. like, if you look at everything else, we want you to be... Because, obviously, the, the, like, um, Wolverine has flaws, but we don't want Hugh Jackman to have any. Right. Yeah. Right. And, and what do you really know about Ryan Reynolds? Nothing. You know that <laughs> Blake Lively, he, he's part of us, you know, he's Deadpool. I can't wait, you know? Yeah. But it's like uh, you don't really know anything about him, and so you know that he's generous and he met mobile and all these like mm -hmm. you know things that he's he does. A great like, entrepreneur. Yeah. He's a great entrepreneur. I think I heard something about altruism. Like I think you donated some stuff recently, but that's it. And I go, that is a dynamite PR person. <laughs> yes. So that's great what marketing. you need more than anything. Yeah. Because you're gonna you're gonna fuck up. Yeah. And so and and but man, when you get in those Marvel movies, like we talked a lot about Thor, mm -hmm. where I was like, "How are you not in the Thor world?" <laughs> but um, it's like those those people, they are very. I don't really know anything about Chris Hemsworth, and I like him very much, but I don't know anything about him. I don't yeah. know politically where he stands. I don't know anything. It's true, yeah, yeah, and that's that's. I think even coming into that as an actor, you got it's it's funny having a podcast where you actually talk about a lot of different topics, right? Yeah. Um, but it's that where. Exactly what you're saying. Like, if you want to get to the top, you have to. It's like, it's like this PG uh, I, idea of a person, right? Yeah. You fall in love with the idea of the person, Absolutely. right? Instead of who they really are, and it's just, I don't know, man. It's there's a there's a part of me where it's like, I f we're not in the, we don't live in a time where I feel like you can say whatever you want and do whatever you want. Like, it's I mean, not that maybe that's not the best thing, way to say it, but like. And, and everyone's opinion, it shouldn't be voice. But in you our know what business, I mean? if yeah. I may, our business is tough because people are buying a product, yeah. right? It's like it's like if in a weird way, and I can I, I look at the NBA, right? People screw up, but I think like because I'm a basketball fan, I don't really follow the other sports all that much. But it's like if somebody screws up, they they all have problems, but it's like you don't really care about it in a way if as long as they're as long as the game's not being hurt, mm. as long as they can continue to do their thing. I mean, yeah. people are self-destructive. You can't police people's, yeah. you know, actions to the best of your ability, but, you know, it's like they're adults. These are adults. And stuff happens. Like, the, you can be in the wrong place at the wrong time and be accused totally. of something that you didn't even do. But, yeah, exactly what you're saying. Like, I and you have to look at it, like, it's funny being an artist, right? And you're a creator and you want to go out there and just like make art. And that's, I wish I could do that all day, every day. And that was the, the beauty of my life. Yeah. But it comes down to like, it, it is a business at the end of the day. And if someone's going to invest in you to be the face of that business in any way, shape or form, you want to make sure that their investment is, you know, safe, that it, that it makes sense for them. Because if I'm going to go in there and be the face of it, but then I'm out here doing all this crazy stuff in the streets and, and threatening people and doing all that's not a good look. That hurts the entire establishment, and then it ruins the chances for people, like the rest of us, to even get in there. Absolutely. I mean, I the thing is though that you, I think that's what comedy is so good for because I, you can get up there and tell jokes as long as you're like these are jokes. Like I'm not. I'm just trying to make you laugh. I don't, you know, agree with you know 
politics is the easiest thing to use here. I don't agree with this guy, this guy, or this guy, you know, or whatever. I don't care. I'm just thinking it's funny about this. And if yeah. you are just like, isn't that funny? And I think that's why it's 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 so important for comedy to just keep pushing that. Yeah. Because you you shouldn't know. I mean, listen, people can get up there and talk about it like, oh, I hate this guy or this girl or whoever, or I don't like this person. Um, stance on abortion or gun control or whatever but but as long as they're being funny and if that's the point is to be funny but not to do a TED talk and mm. I think that's the problem is we get blurred lines that yeah. right now people are using it as like a platform uh, a, a soapbox to get up there and you're like oh but where's the jokes and yeah. it's just like and, and by the way comedy subjective I totally get that but I think I, I'm sort of take all that and I keep a very private life like even my Instagram is and my TikTok like I don't even run my TikTok I don't even run my Facebook. Those are two separate people that I approve things. I don't want to be on them. I try not to be on them as much as I possibly can. And so for me, it's just like, you know, I don't live in my reality as much as I can and not tr and let other people promote that reality mm. the way you would a publicist or your agent or your manager. Yeah, or yeah. yeah. That's Smart. a professional way to do it, though, right? Yeah, but you, I think I, I'm happier, you know. Yeah. yeah. I mean, dude, it's like you, you had to live life, you know. That's what I was realizing. I, I went up to the it's, comedy store. It's having like social media, for example, is, is it's a tool that you should be using to make your life better versus it using you. Because that's the problem is we get sucked into it all the time. How many, I think anybody who's ever had social media has sat there for six hours at one point in their bed, never got out of bed, and they just scrolled and scrolled and scrolled. And you're sitting there like, wow, I just wasted half my day and yeah. I did absolutely nothing except for fried my brain a little bit. Yeah, because it gives a... Uh dopamine hits all yeah, the time yeah dude. it's wild what, what were you gonna say about the comedy store no I, I was at the comedy store last night and what i realized is there's something that i need to work on in my bits where um it, they're not personal because i started out as an impressionist like i mean i had jokes i always had jokes it wasn't just like here's christopher walken at a car wash you know <laughs> but like i did jokes and, and opinions that i had but it was interesting comics that i admired and who went up and it was a great show last night that um my stuff was like wow that is not Nobody really knows. And, and I think it helps my acting that way because it allows me to have it as a completely separate entity. Mm. Whereas, you know, this a couple you know guys were doing stuff that was like, I went and I saw this and this is how I felt about it or whatever. And it was doing well and I thought, and I just had a moment of last night where I, and I've thought this from time to time, but I think it's really obvious to me when I see comedians that get very personal on stage. And it was just like, I had a moment of like, do I, should I be more personal? I don't know. Would people find me interesting or would, in, in addition to that, would I reveal something about myself that people would then go, oh, I don't like that he, you know, because I was trying to work on an RFK impression, you know, <laughs> and um, I'm wondering how people are going to do that because it's like, it's it's not a, you know, he actually had like a physical thing happen to him, right? Right. Yeah. It's not like a a, a, a a mental or a neurological disorder, right? Sure. And so, but I wonder, I tried to do it on stage once, and then I think people were just like, that's, he's handicapped that way. You can't make do that. Like, there was the energy, and I was like, Jesus. Yeah. But. He's like, well, yeah, that's wild. Yeah. I don't know, my reaction to that it. is like, yeah, like, even though, even though it's like, what would you call it? Like a speech impediment or something like that? Or, uh, just like an injury, yeah. right? Yeah. Like yeah. Vocal, vocal injury. Did, did, yeah. um, it sounds like one of the most intelligent people I've ever heard speak before. Dude. Very intelligent. Yeah. Who were some of your big inspirations with impressionists and all that when you were starting off? I love, you know, what's funny is I didn't really probably Jamie, oh, okay, Jamie Fox. I mean, cause I really liked guys like Jamie Fox, Jim Carrey, Robin Williams. I like people that did both. Like I, love I Robin really Williams. love, Stand up, but yeah. I but I make my living for the most part as an actor. Right. Even though I I've, I've been on the road now all month, and I'm going to be on the road all next month, and you know most of April, and it's like that's every weekend I'm on the road, and I love it so much. But I did, but I really truly love those three guys where they were able to do both. That it wasn't because back in the '80s, you know, it was like a lot of guys would do like Christopher Walken at a, and that was enough, <laughs> and people were like, "Whoa, that was Christopher Walken," and they used to do the thing where they would turn around and then come back and they'd be like, wow, yeah, it's him. Yeah. <laughs> and I think, which I think is fun and and kitschy, but sort of of the moment, you know what I'm saying? And I'm not saying that that can't be brought back by a, a different generation, but it just feels a little, you know, maybe not as personal and connected. Um, and so I really like those guys. I, and I, I really liked, uh, um, but I do like, I mean, I like the Impressionists a lot. I always thought that was really fun. I like Phil Hartman, Daryl Hammond. Yeah, yeah. Eddie Murphy. You know, did um? Do you feel that the comedy supports the acting, and the acting supports the comedy? Like, is there a great? 
I symbiosis mean, there? Or? I mean, it's like a it's like a marriage, right? It's like who's ever out of work, like supports the other one. I mean, right. in, in the best way, they're both working at the same time. You know, like I'm doing the cool thing about doing stand up is I'm I'm doing a lot of animation now at the same time. Oh hell yeah! And so um and so that's really fun because I they asked me for a, something like this morning and they were like, okay, when can you come and do this? And I was like, well, I'm in town these days, and that's really great because animation is much more malleable because they'll be like, oh, we have a two week window. When can you come in to do this? Mm. And um, but but it's but if if it's like, oh, you book this movie. You just then it becomes like first priority. It's got to be in yeah. first position. Yeah. Um, not to say that stand up is important, but it's there's something like oh maybe hopefully I can move. And I never mean disrespect by that because I understand I really appreciate and respect the art form I put in twelve years. I was somebody who did not want to be somebody who just came on the scene and was just like yo man you you know I'm an I'm a stand up now. I really worked and 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 sort of I think put in my time. Um, I, I probably could have put in more, but you know, I, I try to put in as much as I possibly can. Yeah, that's great. That's great. It sounds like you love both and you know, they're both similar enough where they don't like obviously contradict each other. Well, when I get to say somebody else's lines and when I get to say my own. Oh, that's a cool way yeah. to put it. So that's why I did it. When I was on Two Broke Girls, we um six, you know, after the first season, we couldn't take a because uh, uh, the show was guaranteed to come back, right? So I had a summer off with with nothing to do. Now I could have traveled, I could have seen my family, and but at that time, you know, stand up just it's it was big. Don't get me wrong, but it wasn't as big as it is now yeah, because right. of YouTube, because of social media, because of streaming platforms, and so. It was just one of those things where I was like with buddies and I was like, hey, why don't I, they were like, why don't you just try to do stand up? And so that summer I just worked my ass off just trying to be a stand up because I'd always wanted to do it, but I truly never wanted to be somebody who just showed up because they would have given me spots, I think sometimes because I was on TV, um, which is um, a good and a bad thing, I guess, you know, but yeah. I wanted to earn that spot. I didn't want it to be something, and that was very important to me. That was my pride, but also like to respect the other people around me and and, and friends and, in it. And I don't know because I'm not in comedy, but I have a massive respect for it. Is that like a, a almost like a rite of passage when it comes to comedy? Like I feel people talk about it so proudly when it comes to like I did that crappy show that got paid a you know I got one beer for the show for this time that I was there all the time. But I we were in the they were in like the lowest of the low places, working their way up to the bigger spots, right? Like, yes. Is that, it's a, it is a pride it is a, it is a rite of passage and the thing about stand up is it's truly um the most remarkable art form. I mean I know it's not an art people like art form but it, it, whatever it is it's remarkable. It's you on a stage essentially with a microphone. People have paid to see you and what they have paid for is you making them laugh. So yeah. that's the that's the uh exchange. the exchange, right? Yeah. So it's like um that is a that is a crazy currency. Yeah, to pay for jokes, <laughs> right? And we, and and here's the thing: yes, comedy is subjective, but there's like um, horror movies and comedies. Everything else is is a drama. It's like right. for essentially, horror movies are telling you we we're gonna make we're gonna scare you. Yeah. You're gonna feel fear. Yeah, something will happen. I'm not saying you're gonna jump, but you something will change in your you know in internally. And same with comedy, right? That that something will happen. And so the other stuff is sort of lumped in for me, but I think. To, to get there and say, hey, for an hour, I'm going to make you laugh. I think that's a pretty special thing. And to be able to do that and just to give the audience what they paid for. Hell yeah. Yeah, that bond with the audience, right? That transaction, that promise. I feel like it's, it's funny because I'm an actor, right? But I can't, you put 200 people in a room, 1,000, I don't care. You put three cameras on me and you give me my lines, I'm good. Yeah. All right, yeah. I can perform all day. If I had to go up on stage and you give me a camera and you, gotta tell, you tell me I got to try to make people laugh, with my own, I, there's no way. It, it's I a, can't. Well, here's the thing. You never know if you can until you do it. It's That's like true. learning karate from a book, right? D I could figure it out, but I have no like desire right. to, to go out there and do that. No, for sure. You have to yeah. fail in order to succeed. Like, right? Yeah. Like, it's, it's like Daniel San could not have beaten Cobra Kai from a book. Right. He could do it with Mr. Miyagi and getting in fights. Yeah, yeah. That's, and so the same thing with comedy is you got to get knocked out. Because you don't, you know, I mean, I think about bombs that I've had where I'm just like, wow. And listen, I think you do learn more from bombing, but yeah. holy hell, you never forget. I mean, it's weird. I never remember crushing. Like, I'm sure I crush or or have crush or whatever. But those don't really stick with me is the times. And it's not the failure that sticks with me. It's not like the me sort of like um, admonishing myself. But it's the idea of like, why didn't that work? 
Mm. What, mm. I don't ask why well, it worked when it worked because see, you write all day to work for it to work. Yeah. Right. I like that element then because I, I love problem solving. And that's one of the reasons I love producing. I love film in general is because yeah. there's so many things you have to figure out all the time. And directing, for example, you got to figure yeah. out on the spot, right? Yeah. So I do like it from that that element now that you mention it. But but yeah, there's and just And to figure something. out on the fly yeah. in the middle when things yeah. aren't going, you know, like, um, you know, there's a, I'm doing a, b- a bunch of jokes about being Jewish right now. And I do nice. think in certain markets people hear the word Jewish and they hear the word Israel as the same thing. Right. So they're not on board with it. Now maybe, and I'm assuming, I, I don't know. There's a million reasons why people, maybe the joke isn't funny, maybe I suck. But it's like, it's one of those things where I, I feel people tighten and I'm almost trying to write a joke about, about how Israel and, and being Jewish are not the same thing to sort of give them permission to laugh. Because I, I joke, I have a joke about Palestine, but I have a, a lot of jokes about being Jewish and sort of the stereotypes that sort of, that we are, have, you know, have ca- carried with us through history. But it's never enough because of, of what is happening in Israel, at least right now in this climate. Mm. And so that's the other thing, it's all about timing. Like, does your stuff work right now? Yeah. And if something happens in the current climate, like when I was doing, I've been doing Trump for 15 years, right? And then it was really fun. And then the moment he got elected, people were like, <laughs> at least here, I can't, you know, I, you know, I, I will tell you, I, I did Texas like this weekend and they were, they, they were a blast. I mean, such a, I love doing Texas, but it was people in LA specifically were just like, no, we don't, it's too <laughs> real now. And so they, it didn't matter that it, it was the same jokes, by the way. I wasn't doing different jokes, and they weren't even political jokes. See, that's really interesting to me. But it was just the the, cli- the, the temperature change in the room. Because, like, obviously the guy was popular. He was a reality TV star. Realist, like, oh, we all knew who he was. My he, buddy said he didn't vote for himself. Yeah, and men, right. And, like, men don't change after they're, like, 40 or 50. Like, yeah. they, they, they just don't. And, like, he hasn't necessarily changed at all. No, it's just and his he, job title changed. Right, yeah. right. And like, yeah, just very, very divisive. It's weird. And so it's like, I, so I, I, I went away from political and then it was like, you know, you, and I didn't want to be hacked. That's the thing about the impressions, right? I never, especially with Trump, I didn't want to get up there and just do things that you would agree with. Like it's like, you know, if he's just like, I'm such an idiot, so stupid, you know, right. you know, then people kind of go, yay, or they go boo, right? Because you're not really, there's no thought in it. There's no story. There's no point of view. Yeah. And so, and it's, it's hard. I'm trying to, ch- I'm trying to challenge myself. Like I'm trying to write a bit about autism right now and I'm not autistic. At least I don't think so. And, um, <sighs> and trying to figure that out, but have a point of view where people are not like you're cause I'll tell you one of my great friends who opens for me all the time, he does a bit on down syndrome and he is, doesn't have down syndrome, but he likes watching it on online. Like the kids, the key, like there's yeah, a bunch of guys yeah. that have like channels and shit. It's fun. It's like we were talking about love on the spectrum. Like, you know, I love watching that. I cry every time. And um, he was saying how much he loves these guys. And when we were in Virginia, this woman walked out of the show. And she was just like, you can't make fun of those people. And he was like, and I've heard him do the joke a hundred times. He did it in Dallas, or sorry, Fort Worth this past weekend, four sold out shows, not a single person left. Like, it didn't mm-hmm. matter. And he, you know, he was hosting. So he's the first person that they see. And he was talking about it. And holy hell, did, was it funny? And this woman just was like, grabbed her things and was like, no, I'm out of here. And you go, so, you know, maybe it's the individual, but people are just, they, they, they're they on edge about so many things. They yeah. hear Down syndrome, you must be making fun of those people instead of like, up, you know, uh, awarding them or, or sorry, or applauding them, excuse me. Have you seen yeah. the uh, Shane Gillis talk about his brothers or cousins with Down syndrome? His or? uncle, I think, right? Oh, maybe, yeah, yeah. yeah Have that's you great. seen Doesn't that special? Or? But here's the reason why that works. Again, I think that, I mean, I think Shane is, you know, I think he's a great comic. I truly do. His stuff is, when he does that type of stuff, it's personal. He's yeah, saying it. So he's it's, relating to it. So it's yeah. that's the thing with he me. Gets, it's harder because I don't really know. And my joke is sort of about how everybody under 30 has autism today. And so, yeah. but it's like, but but it's that's sort of true and not true. Like in my generation, you know, they're like, we had no peanut allergies. Mm. We did, just people were dying. We just didn't know, you know what I'm saying? We're like, oh, we lost a, a few good men this year, you know? Yeah. It was like getting traded on the Yankees. And it, and so we, we just didn't have those kids in around. Um, but now it's like there's such an awareness of everything, but because I don't have anybody who's autistic in my family, I still have opinions on it. And so it's not as palpable, it's not as digestible for an audience because they think I'm making fun of them. And I have to constantly be like, I'm not talking about people with real, like, 
I'm talking about these other people and you and it's like you have to beat them over the head with it. At least I feel that way. And maybe as I get better at telling the joke or get to be a better comic, I won't have to be as ham fisted about it. Right. Yeah, but that's stuff you have to navigate and like you said, it's problem solving, right? Dude, on stage. Yeah. Bro. Yeah. Like if I if I, yeah. I I do like that element though. Like the one of the things I love about comedy too, and that's and the same thing in a great script too. It's it's you are able to take something and have this perspective that nobody else has thought of or or seen right, and then you make it palpable for anybody or like entertaining or somebody to digest it. You know, like that's when it's like because if it's if it's that boring through line, I, I, I don't know. Like that's the same thing. Everybody anybody can come up with that. Well, they're gonna do a remake of it anyway. Yeah. Like that yeah. that thing that you have that you think is so unique but it isn't and they've done it a hundred times, they're already doing it and that's what a lot of those formulaic films are that mm. get done on those smaller budgets and things like that. But to do something truly unique, like, um, and I loved, here's the thing, I, I, first and foremost, I loved Saltburn. I thought it was a great movie but my one of my favorite movies of all time is The Talented Mr. Ripley. Oh, yeah. Mm. And they're doing a series called Ripley on Netflix. Mm. So it's oh, like, wow. so it's like it's it's hard it's it's hard to be inventive and then that's why people's personal stories do so well mm-hmm. you know but and that's the tough thing i was th- say, thinking like um actually now maybe it was after we we you were on the pod but uh, like right after but i i tried it, the, the 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 bit germinated from you know what's crazy is we don't talk a lot about autism now i i don't do this anymore but i'm like a lot of our a lot of people in movies i think have autism like the characters that we just aren't aware of it like thor Thor, <laughs> right? He's just a guy who's like, I want my hammer. That's all he wants, like, is to find the hammer. And I remember I like tried to explore that on stage one night, and it bombed for like five minutes straight. And I'm talking <laughs> oh, about really? a packed crowd, a full house packed crowd. Yeah. And then, yeah. and I was just like, and I, and I was just like, tried to do it the impression. I was like, no, but you know what I'm saying? Like, he's just sort of you know, for two hours looking for his hammer. Uh. Two hours. <laughs> And then, uh, and they were just I like, like they were like, no. <laughs> and so you got to be like, okay, another angle in, you know. Do you right. Think, do you think it's because they just love that character so much, or is it more because if you really break it down, it's not like he's not Tony Stark, man. He's not the smartest dude in the room. Yeah. He, he's a he's a good dude, yes. and he's a beast, you know. But he's not. I think part of it is that it felt number one. I don't think it was a well. It wasn't a good joke. It wasn't well crafted. <laughs> That's first and foremost because they'll give you yeah. credit for a, a well crafted joke, mm-hmm. even if they don't agree with you. Um, but it's but the less personal touch you can associate to sort of shield you from or mm. deflect it, you know, the more clever it's got to be. Yeah. And I yeah. just think something like that, it was not. So then I took a completely different approach, and I'm working through that right now. And um, I mean, that was like the a germination where I just thought about that's an interesting thing. And and um, I, I wonder if anybody ever said that before, and maybe they never did because it wasn't funny. But um, <laughs> you know, it was just. It, I remember thinking like, and I don't remember anything else about that set that night. I just remember that that part mm. bombed. <laughs> That was Oppenheimer right there. <laughs> and so I was like, whatever. And so I, you work through it. It's like, who cares? Um, but but the bigger the stage and the more you're on, it's like whenever I do like the store or like factory or the improv, even though I think I, there's always pressure for me to crush, to like not just mm-hmm. work so so it's hard. So then I, I go, well, when can I work stuff out? So then I try to work it out on the road, but I try not to do it that much on the road because they're paying you know, tickets. But you know, when, when is this going to air? Well, when do you want it to air? No, I'm just curious because I have shows this weekend. Okay, yeah, we usually do Tuesdays, but it. Oh, I, I have plenty, plenty of shows coming up that I can pitch. Yeah, but 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 I miss this this one that I'm doing. I'm like, it's a small room. I'm going to be in Massachusetts this weekend. I leave tomorrow morning, and um, I'm like, I'm literally going to bring cameras and just do crowd work and try to work through all the bits that I can't, you know. And That's it's great. like. And then I'll give him like like good shit too, you know. I'll give him like the hits, but yeah, yeah. I'm like, I gotta work this out because I just did um, Dallas or Fort Worth, excuse me, Dallas, Fort Worth, uh, Austin, and uh, Chicago this month. I just did wow. those last three oh, wow. weeks, and so I'm like, and I I felt like Wait. no, no, they were just so full, which I was so grateful for. Them, so I was like, oh, I can't really work out the new shit, you know. Well, how how different is it if you're trying to work something out? being somewhere like Austin or Dallas or Chicago versus, you know, LA or Florida or whatever. How well, people's assholes get so tight here. I do uh, I do think <laughs> and I, I maybe it's unpopular, it's harder to get things across, I think, that that are that are that are um volatile. Like you can't do mm. even if it's a funny joke, and maybe I'm just not funny enough to get it out, but you just hear 
I got off of the like Israel topic, and then I talked started talking about my trans brother, which is my my brother's been uh, trans for twenty years, and so it's like they were like more accepting of that, but then they weren't sure where I was going with it, or they weren't sure if I was if it was real. It's weird. It's like I I don't I don't want. I don't want to like give people a note card ahead of time and be like, this is what I believe in life. And these are the people in my family. Right. And so I think it's harder for me to work on stuff like that in LA. And Mm -hmm. maybe that's just who I am as a person. And obviously everybody else can crush at it and and do whatever they want. And I just have a problem with that. But it's like, I'll try shit where I'm going like, what? Why are you guys tight on this? Right. And then you're like, all right. But I, I don't get mad at the audience. It's just in my head. I go, it worked in, Fort Worth, it worked in Chicago. Mm. That's the South and the Midwest. Those are two very different places. Yeah. That joke worked. But here it doesn't work. Hmm. And so and there's maybe jokes here that work that don't work. So that's why you get a tour of the country to really and don't yeah. let don't let any one city define your act. Uh, that's, that's good, good advice. Yeah. yeah, and so you you know and that's the thing is right like because LA and New York have comics that are unbelievable and they crush but they can't go out of the city. Right, because they're so good mm-hmm. here for like yeah. the exact political climate. But the moment they go like two hours north, I go, yeah, California is real different. Yeah, <laughs> that's why comedy's so tough. It doesn't even translate globally, you know. It doesn't, and even location, you know, nationwide, it's it's extremely. Uh, it almost feels small in the sense of so if you can hit on a big market, you're doing something crazy. I feel like it's it's more. You know, I think that that's why not not obviously wordsmiths do very well, but I think about you know a lot of physical comedians yeah. that are able to sort of um, like uh, and and, not, and they're I mean these are the biggest comics in the world, but you look at them and you sort of go not that they're not um, they're just not maybe storytelling or like. Uh, cultural comics mm. where you're like, yeah, the thing in Portland, Oregon, they have this like, you know, ice cream shot. Like that will never work in, in, in Brazil. Like, yeah, but there, yeah, there yeah, are yeah. other guys who are so funny, like Sebastian Maniscalco. You guys know Sebastian? Yep. He's so, you know, everybody can get what he's going through. He's like, mm. just this older guy who's like, I don't like getting old because I like young people. And he's just sort of like, <laughs> he's like, what? And he's just, and everybody has that moment yeah. of the, oh, this fucking guy on a plane yeah, yeah. yeah and he has it and so you kind of go i get it bro yeah, yeah. The, the thing that got me hooked on that guy the first time was when he did that bit about the uh, your buddy's house with the bow and arrow because i have a bow and arrow so i was like crying laughing <laughs> relatable dude yeah, right yeah, yeah, i yeah. mean he's he's you know and, yeah. and and you think about there are guys that can sell like stadiums now you know and it's it's really impressive and that is that is by the way that's a different you know, there's like, you know, there's a algebra and then a calculus. And yeah. Then, like, that is a different level of math mm-hmm. when you figure out, like, there are people that are the, some of the best comics in the world, I think, that can't sell theaters. But it, but it's not, it's just because they're what, they're so niche, you know, yeah. who they, or some of them, you know, the smarter comics than I have said this, there are people that aren't meant for those arenas. I know that mm-hmm. we all see that Madison Square Garden, it's like, oh, I'm not playing Madison Square Garden, that I must be a failure, a loser. But it's like, there are some people that are unreal in a 250 seater, 120 seater that just sit there and have you in the palm of their hand, but it doesn't make as much money. So Mm -hmm. people sort of, you know, Icarus, excuse me, they fly so close to the sun and then just hope that their wings don't get burned off. Cause you, cause no one will tell you, no one will say, don't do Madison square garden. They'll all say, you gotta do it. And you're like, really? Cause I'm like a one liner, sit down comic with a guitar and I do really well in coffee shops. Like, no, 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 no. Ask where guard, let's go. Yeah, Cause yeah. it's money. Yeah. It's big right. money. Yeah. So it's balancing all that shit. So yeah. that's where your team wants you to go. Hey, dude, exactly. Yeah. And yeah. you'll get more fans that way. Yeah. Man. Um, I was, uh, sorry, go for it. No, yeah, I was, I was, uh, you know, I know you're good friends with Jamie Foxx and, and he does some pretty great impressions He's and I'm just, best. I was just sitting here thinking, do you ever sit around with your buddies or, or any friends that can do impressions? You guys just sit and do impressions all day. I mean, really? or is it more like, not really. You work on it solely. We'll go on a like my buddy Matt and I. We'll we, we'll go to a restaurant. We've done this a few times. And we'll just get not intentionally, but we'll just start having some drinks and eating, and you know, just like out for dinner, and we'll make a night of it, and we'll just think of the dumbest impression that we can think of. <laughs> yeah. Like if it's um this guy Brock. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> like 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 Thor. Um. Uh. Like uh, what would it even be? Like Thor as Barack Obama. I just thought of that in the moment. But him going like, uh, uh, let me be clear. You know, like just something that would just make the, us laugh when we're drunk. The Missy Sam Elliott one oh, yeah. was hilarious. Yeah, I appreciate you, man. And yeah. There was like a yeah. Gandalf as, um, it was at the Laugh Factory. Uh, 
Um, I used to do Gandalf reading like Fifty Shades of Grey. Something like that. Yeah. It was like when I was, was younger, really good. I was just like just trying to do stuff that like I thought would get be funny or just like stupid. Like, you know, just like the way that you just make your friends laugh. Like I'm doing Anthony yep. Bourdain eating out a woman. And um, <laughs> you just whatever it is or like Neil deGrasse Mike Tyson or like, you know, and you're just it doesn't. It's just trying to be I'm working on Jason Statham stuff now yeah. that I'm really working out. And um I do him in a lot of environments because I, I I love Jason Statham, but um he's such like an interesting sort of dude, and um so I'm like that's what I'm gonna I'm just I've just literally been getting on stage as like talking as him, yeah. and just like figuring stuff out, yeah. And it's it's it whatever like whatever would make your friends I feel like laugh and like the fifteenth hour of a road trip, right? Like that so we'll do that we'll like yeah, get yeah. in a car or we'll do like you know comedians are like telling the dumbest jokes as like you know Trump or whatever it is you know yeah. But that's the stuff. I, yeah, go ahead. No, I, I was going to, I want to definitely make sure we get in like upcoming stuff and oh, yeah, stuff yeah. to promote. Um, I, I unfortunately you. have to, have to roll, but. Um, no, you're good. Uh, let me. Uh, but yeah, like whatever you want to plug. We yeah, can, yeah. No, I appreciate you, brother. Thank you so much for having me on. Dude, yeah, I apologize. I have a heart out today. I, I really do. This has been fucking awesome. Uh, I'm really glad I got to meet you. And oh, here. dude, this is great. So um, yeah, at Jonathan Kite on Instagram. Um, the Jonathan Kite on TikTok, Jonathan Kite on Facebook, and then um, come see me on the road, you know, or uh, drop me a line in the Instagram comment section because t- I'll, I'll read those if I, you know, where I'm going to be. But I'm going to be in Dallas, Texas, the eighth and ninth uh, at Hyenas. I'm going to be at Funny Moan in Des Moines, Iowa, uh, the uh, March 22nd and 23rd. Uh, March 8th and 9th was uh, Hyenas Dallas, and then the 29th and 30th I'll be at Stand Up Live in Huntsville, Alabama, and then I'll be at uh, Funny Bone uh, Dayton, Ohio, April 26th and 27th. Love that. Sick. My uh, my girlfriend's from Ohio, so oh cool, great. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's a great the the middle of the country. So yeah. I'm hoping that everything works the best there. Hell yeah, dude. Um, well, and we'll put all that in the descriptions oh, below. Yeah, awesome. So we'll we'll have that all listed too. And um, Jonathan Kite Comic dot com. Jonathan Kite Comic dot com. I never much. say it by the way. That's why I realize yeah. I'll, somebody will be like my PR or whatever. Will be like you didn't mention anything. <laughs> and I was like, you're absolutely right. I said nothing about anything. They're like, they don't even know who you are. Yeah, Dude, I'm, I'm awesome. bad like that too. I I really like. I don't know if it's like a self promotion thing that I'm not trying to do. I need to do more of it. I, I just do it. I just don't think of it, dude. Me it doesn't either. come into my head. If you like, hadn't asked, I wouldn't have like. Yeah. Nah, we gotta make sure. Like when you're sure. wearing a great event, dude. I, I've maybe because I've spent and grew up on social media. I spent so much time on my phone that when I'm at an event, I'm like, I just want to be there, hundred percent. You know, and I like, and then I forget, and I'm like, yeah, didn't get a damn photo with you know this whatever the hell at this sick ass. You know, I'm like, damn it. But it's, it's all good, dude. It's, good yeah. to see you again, bro. Dude, love you, brother. Great love to you see bad. you, man. Yeah, Thank you too, you. bro. Thank, Thank you so much. It's a pleasure. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Thank you for watching Studio 22. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And follow our socials at Studio 22 Podcast.